Recently, the Palm Springs Kiwanis Club had another great speaker. Let's listen in. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. Which This is the first time I've been here. I've passed it a hundred times. I don't live too far from here, actually, but uh, I will definitely be back. Uh, but thank you for uh, having me um, speak to you today. I'm from, originally from Buffalo, New York. Uh, I was born and raised there. And currently it's 24 degrees and they just had snow yesterday, so aren't we lucky? Uh, but uh, I went to uh, St. Thomas Aquinas uh, Grammar School and Bishop Timon High School. I went to college, Marietta College in Ohio. Uh, and then uh, I got married to my uh, college sweetheart and we moved out here after a tour in the restaurant business. I'm familiar with restaurants. <clears throat> Originally, the, uh, uh, I came to town uh, with Jeremiah's, if anybody ever remembers the old Jeremiah's restaurant. I was running it when it was in its heyday, like in 82, 83, if you remember all that. Uh -huh. And I left there because they wanted me to uh, take a, a district in Texas. and I. We didn't want to move. Our kids were just entering grammar school, and it was time to settle down. And you know, restaurants—if you're familiar with them—the hours are crazy. So uh, we decided that we're going to just stay here in Palm Springs. And uh, 34 years later, here we are. So uh, I went into the uh, investment business back in '86. Uh, <clears throat> I cut my teeth on the uh, 19, the crash of 1987 and a few others uh, along the way. So I've been doing this for quite some time. But I wanted to pick up, uh, kind of give you an overview of what's going on out there. Uh, I was, uh, let's begin. Uh, as we all know, in 2015 was not a particularly good year for U.S. equity markets. Both the S&P 500 and Dow Jones averages were lower for the year, while the NASDAQ was higher, primarily due to the uh, biotech stocks rising 11 percent. For many, success in 2015 was simply a flat return. <coughs> Fixed income had a good year in 2015, with the exception of the bonds from uh, energy companies that were affected by the drop in the barrel price of crude oil. Those bonds were influenced by Saudi Arabia's decision not to play the swing producer for the global petroleum market as the Saudis traded a higher barrel price of crude for its maintenance of market share. The Saudis also wanted to squeeze U.S. companies involved in fracking production. The fixed income market this year, 2016, is improving <clears throat> due to U.S. dollar weakness and a global economic slowdown. Aiding energy bonds was a rise from $26 to $40 a barrel for crude oil. This price rise has also helped stabilize the equity markets for the time being. The low interest rate environment that we're experiencing is influencing the sector rotation that's going on right now in the stock markets <laughs> in that the sector shift has been from healthcare and biotechs where there's been little dividend growth to sectors paying higher dividends such as utilities and consumer staples and energy stocks. This is all in an effort to obtain more income and some growth. That's the quest these days is, is income. Investors have been moving towards large cap, high dividend paying equities, and this trend should remain intact until the U.S. presidential election takes place. Familiar names such as Coca-Cola, AT&T, and Verizon are being acquired by institutions and investors. These familiar names are also being picked up by Europeans and Asians as overseas market volatility in China and uncertainty regarding Britain's continued membership in the European Union remains a question until June 23rd, uh, just about two months from now, when the citizens there will vote on whether to remain. The uncertainty has many investors uh, crossing the pond and sending their cash to America until that decision is made. Looking forward, a developing concern that uh, has been the, uh, been the declining pace of corporate America's earnings. On March 25th, the U.S. Department of Commerce released the fourth quarter 2015 corporate profit figures. Overall, after-tax profits were 15% below previous year earnings. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, corporate profits have been declining since they peaked at 10% uh, after the second quarter of 2013. The current expectation is for an increase of only 7.5%. I mentioned this profit decline since investments in equities are primarily a function of earnings. As earnings increase, so do stock prices. And since earnings have not been as robust, they have also been a contributor for the market volatility that we've been experiencing since January. <clears throat> as earnings per share, growth expectations have diminished. The upcoming reporting of first quarter earnings, which begins next week, raises concern. Interest rates have been held down by the Federal Reserve Bank for so long, seven years now, that worries are growing with regard to consumer demand for products. The belief is demand has been pulled forward and the result may be reflected in decreased earnings in corporate America for Q1. Already, companies are lowering their estimates for the year 2016, which is not a positive signal for the equity markets. Lastly, <clears throat> regarding negative interest rates, it's an area that's being talked about and with which European banks are getting involved because the Europeans don't have the deep liquidity in their bond market that the U.S. does. This is primarily due to the fact that the Union is composed of 28 countries, which are still sovereign entities having their own interests, as opposed to the U.S. and its federal system, which has one central government in Washington, D.C., and 50 states that all deal in one grand liquid bond market. The EU uh, has to get approval from 28 different parliaments in order to make changes in policy or procedures, which takes time and slows the process. The European Central Bank, Bank wants member country banks to lend more money to business now in an effort to spur economic growth. So it has imposed a four-tenths of 1% charge on excess reserves of the member banks to spur lending of those reserves. In the U.S. currently, the Federal Reserve, our Federal Reserve Bank, pays one-half of 1%. One bank excess reserves is the cash held at central banks over and above what is required to back customer deposits when they demand cash disbursements from their accounts. So far, the move is not promoting much lending. The member banks are thus paying the ECB to hold their excess reserves, but have not yet begun to pass those negative rates on to their customers, choosing to swallow that cost, thus lowering the bank earnings. This is known as pushing on a string. A phrase, a phrase coined, no pun intended, by John Maynard Keynes. With this move, Euro central bankers are running out of bullets as far as boosting the European economy. One of the results is the pickup in the price of gold to hedge risk in the Euro and the US dollar. Currently, we've invested in the metal in client accounts. These trends appear to be in place for a while, possibly extending into 2017. We can only wait and work around the situation until the world's central banks decide that debasing and manipulating the currencies is not the answer to economic growth. Politicians are going to have to kick in and uh, offer some uh, tax cuts to help things along. Sir. Yeah, is Trump gonna make America great again? Well, geez, I don't know. Uh, he's got, a, you know, he's got a. He's a businessman, and I know a lot of people. Uh, I'm not into. Uh, uh, I don't know what your persuasions are, yeah, but the kidding. thing is, is that uh, you know he possibly, uh, but he's a businessman. Look at what's going on now. We're 20, million, 20 trillion in debt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Obama wants to, just today, he went to the microphones to tell everybody about uh, how they're going to penalize uh, companies that are trying to, uh, but yes, the inversion uh, situation that's going on. I keep all my money in Panama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, uh, that's a, that is a situation. It's, uh, they're squeezing every nickel out of every buddy. That's what, that's what they're trying to do here. So I don't know. Will he make uh, America great again? Well, if you look at it like a P&L, maybe so. If you just cut off the dead weight. Well, the, and the thing is, is that it's all up to you. 
if you want to work hard, you can make it. I mean, there's a you know, little ingenuity and hard work. It goes a long way in this country. You couldn't do that over in Europe. You know, you could have all the ingenuity and hard work. Uh, it'd be uh, a lot harder to accomplish. I have more confidence in the United States bond market than I would over in uh, Europe. Okay. And one of the reasons is because right now they're trying to do quantitative easing over there. They don't have the liquidity and the, the, they don't have the ability to create the bots out of thin air like we did here. Uh, they have used a lot of the uh, bonds to backstop their first quantitative easing which took place uh, a year or two ago. Uh, all the quality bonds are already collateralized. They're mostly German bonds because that's where all the money is. And uh, we're kind of waiting for Mario Draghi to do something. They're talking about now uh, going ahead and buying uh, not lower quality bonds and also stocks. You got the central bank talking about buying stocks and playing the stock market. You got governments involved in market enterprises and that's totally wrong. Uh, and that's where they're going. A lot of that cash that's coming over here that I mentioned from China and from the Euros, that's where it's going in the bond markets. Look at the 10 year. They're knocking it down. Panicville was 1.55%, I think, just uh, a couple months ago. Uh, today, the low on the 10 year was 1.62, uh, I think it was, 1.69. So we're getting there again. Uh, they're flooding the bond markets. There was a tremendous rally uh, just uh, over the past uh, three weeks or so in bonds. You'll, you'll probably see it on your statements. Your, if your, your bond investments will, should be worth uh, a lot more. Yes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would uh, be, be here rather than anything anywhere else. Okay. Thank you very much. For more, go to KiwanisPalmSprings.org.